So today I'm going to take you through mass spectroscopy, a technique where we bombard a sample with electrons to determine its structure and mass at a very accurate level. So this is under applying chemical ideas. So module eight, inquiry question two of the HSC syllabus, specifically investigating mass spec. See, the key take home message with mass spec is we bombard a organic sample with electrons. Now, of course, spectroscopy is a study of how energy and matter interact. And you might have seen that mass spec is also called mass spectrometry. The reason we call it spectrometry is because this is a destructive form of testing. You can see when the electrons bombard the original sample, it fragments into two smaller ions. Since this is a destructive testing, you can also call it mass spectrometry. So these daughter ion fragments are now going to pass through an external magnetic field. Since they're charged when they're inside the magnetic field, they're going to experience a force. However, you might see that the larger fragment doesn't change its curvature significantly, whereas a smaller fragment significantly changes its curvature. And that's simply due to the fact that the same force is being applied on both these fragments. However, because of the larger mass, there is less effect on its path of motion. So what you end up doing is you end up sorting all these daughter fragments based on their mass. And that gets picked up by a detector. And thus we can graph the mass of those daughter fragments over their relative intensity on the y-axis. Key point is that mass spec provides very accurate information about mass and structure. And one additional feature that it has compared to other spectroscopy techniques is it can also provide isotopic information. So you can see that with the chlorine mass spec graph here. If you imagine that chlorine was a sample here, when we bombard chlorine, it's going to form daughter fragments with a chloride ion. Now there are different isotopes of chlorine meaning there are different variations of chlorine with a different number of neutrons. There are some heavier forms of chlorine which have more neutrons in the nucleus compared to lighter forms of chlorine. So imagine this is a heavier chlorine. Let's say it's chlorine 37, meaning it has a total of 37 protons and neutrons in the nucleus. We also have chlorine 35, which is our smaller fragment. Now, chlorine 35, due to its smaller mass, is going to experience a greater curvature under the magnetic field force. Whereas chlorine 37 will not be deflected significantly. And so when it's picked up at the detector, you will be able to accurately determine the mass of both fragments and their relative intensity. And this is in fact how we find the atomic mass units or molar mass for an element on the periodic table. Since mass spec also provides us with isotopic information, we can also use it in radioactive fossil dating in drug detection where drugs are metabolized and there's different isotopes of that drug and in space compound analysis. We have foreign elements in different isotopes, for example, on a medial. So recall, as I said, the sample ends up being present inside the vacuum chamber and it's present in a vaporized form, meaning it's gaseous. And then we have a metal source, which is going to be heated up to emit electrons. When it emits electrons, we're going to bombard the sample with those electrons. And we're going to form daughter ion fragments. Now, the interesting thing is, all the fragments you form tend to be daughter fragments that have lost one electron, aka they have a positive one charge. Now they're all different size, so when they're exposed to the electromagnet and the magnetic field lines, due to the fact that they have the same charge, they experience the same force. However, not all fragments are the same mass. So heavier fragments tend to not be deflected significantly, and they end up following this path here. And since they move to the periphery of the vacuum tube, they will be collected and removed. Similarly, very small fragments due to the magnetic field force will be deflected too much as they have a very small mass. This will also result in them being removed via the vacuum pump. So what we end up doing is we tend to separate all our fragments based on their mass to charge ratio, where too high of a mass results in poor deflection and too low of a mass results in too significant of a deflection. 
So daughter fragments with appropriate mass to charge ratio will then travel down and be detected and we can then get our mass spectrograph. So this is a full annotated diagram and it's just important to note that we have absorbance, so relative abundance on our y-axis and mass to charge ratio on our x-axis. Now, since the charge of most of fragments is plus one, the mass to charge ratio tends to simply be the mass of the fragment in atomic mass units. This is what a mass spectrograph looks like when you're interpreting it. So recall we have relative abundance on the y-axis and mass to charge ratio, which is quite literally just mass in atomic mass units. Now, whenever I look at a mass spectrograph, there are two things I do. First thing, I look at the largest molecular weight peak. So here you can see it's the mass spectra for ethanoic acid. So the largest mass to charge ratio peak, this parent molecular ion peak, must simply be the entire ethanoic acid if it lost one electron. And since it lost one electron, the electron has negligible mass, so it has the same mass as the original compound. So key point here, the parent molecular ion peak has the same atomic mass units as the original compound. And that gives you a clue to what the compound is and provides an accurate mass of the compound. The next peak I always look at is the base peak. That is a peak that occurs at relative 100% abundance. Now the reason it's relative abundance on the y-axis is the peak, the daughter fragment that's formed in the greatest frequency has given an arbitrary value of 100%. And all other daughter fragments that we study are measured relative to that 100%. So here you can see there's an atomic mass unit size of 43. And that represents the CH3 CO base peak right here. And you can logically deduce most of the other fragments. So you can see the COOH peak here, which would represent the carbonyl group and the hydroxyl group combined. And these are all just daughter fragments that were formed when electrons bombarded the original ethanoic acid. So let's jump right into a question. So here we have a chemical that contains carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen. The fact it contains nitrogen possibly hints that it could be an amine. And given it doesn't have an oxygen, likely not an amide. So you can note that this carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen at a particular ratio. It's at a 4 to 1 to 11 ratio. And they've shown you that the mass spectrum is right here and there are two peaks that you must always pick up the parent molecular ion peak so that's the peak that occurs at greatest molecular weight now you'd ignore the small peak here because that would just be an isotopic variation of this main peak here and this has a value of 73 atomic mass units now the second peak i look at apart from the parent molecular ion is the base peak. Now the base peak is a peak that occurs at 100% abundance, and you can see that right here. So I always like to account for the base peak in parent molecular ion. However, for this question, when you're simply identifying the compound, you only need the parent molecular ion. So I know the basic molecular formula is C4NH11 bracket N. And n could be any value. It could be a 1, 2, 3, or 4, which we multiply the 4, the 1, and 11 by to get the final compound. Now, we know its atomic mass units is 73. So what we can do is find n, which is equal to 73, divided by the atomic mass units of 4 carbon atoms, 1 nitrogen atom, and 11 hydrogen atoms. And that equals to 0 0.998, which rounds off to 1. So the compound's molecular formula would hence be C4H11N. And this would be an amine. Specifically, it could be, for example, butanamine or one of its isomers. And that concludes mass spec.